a big night. What a what a what a week it's been in Inglewood. We had the national championship game on Monday night in SoFi, and right next door, live tonight from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles at eight Eastern time on TBS is AEW Dynamite. And here to talk about that and so much more is in fact the CEO, GM, and head of creative of AEW, as well as the chief football strategy officer of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wait a minute. The general manager is sporting director of Fulham FC, which is on fire. Joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show is Tony Khan. Good to see you, Tony. Great to see you, Rich. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to see you whenever I can, but uh, this is the first time I've been able to see you in front of cameras. And it's true. Uh, you're, I love your show. And Thanks, it's brother. an honor to be able to talk about AEW and the Jags in Fulham, but we have this huge show tonight on TBS, so I appreciate you having me on of course. before I go to the forum for the big night. So let's before we, 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 we dive in about tonight specific, let's talk about AEW in particular, because I, I interviewed your dad in London, as a matter of fact, on NFL Network a few years ago and asked him about AEW, and I got the sense that you had to twist his arm a little bit um <laughs> that he wasn't the, like why are we taking on wwe like why are we do like is it possible to do that what 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 gave you this light bulb over your head to go ahead and create aew well Tony? there were a number of factors i thought for years there should be competition in pro wrestling and i felt like uh there was an opportunity with the tv space yes. that given what was happening with tv rights to launch a new wrestling company uh there would be a lot of interest and frankly there were a lot of wrestlers in 2019 that were going to be available to launch a wrestling company with chris jericho is a huge name yes, he and he was a free agent and so in 2018 i started having really serious conversations with chris jericho mm -hmm. and there was this great group of wrestlers wrestling for ring of honor uh that i began speaking to uh at the time the you know, young bucks cody rhodes hangman page a number of others and together we got a wrestling company going and in 2019 there was really, as I predicted, big demand for the television, and we ended up with this great show, Wednesday Night Dynamite, on TBS every yes. week. And now we have a second show, Friday Night Rampage, on TN TNT, which is great. So, um, And uh, it's amazing how quickly it's grown, but my dad actually uh you're correct he did, was not a believer in it at first my sense was uh, <laughs> i picked up what he was putting down huh yeah you did that pretty much now did you ever get a message from stanford connecticut home of the world wrestling uh entertainment and federation whatever you want to call them did you ever get a message from them don't try this D -d 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 -think no twice you no not like that no i not i think uh the competition's been really good for the sport and okay. i think for wrestling fans we've seen there's more people watching wrestling than there were. And it's great. There's a bigger audience for everybody. It's a bigger pie. And I think AEW has really done some of the best shows in all of wrestling. We built these big franchises. Right. We have pay-per-views. Uh, we've had Double or Nothing, which we started in Las Vegas, and it's become a great tradition. Now it's at T-Mobile Arena. It started at MGM Grand in 2019. Uh, and then we've got All Out around Chicago area, Labor Day weekend. Uh, full gear, we just had a really huge event at Prudential Center where the Devils play. You got AEW Revolution on March the 5th at Chase Center, the fourth iteration That's of, it. of and AEW then Revolution. Coming around, and we have these four big quarterly events. We also launched a fifth big event on mm -hmm. pay-per-view, Forbidden Door, which is a partnership between AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Right. So we've partnered with companies a lot. Um, so it's really interesting what's happening out there in the marketplace of wrestling right now, but certainly AEW, uh, one of the leaders in the sport. It's, un it's really unbelievable because I, I remember, who did we have here uh, at the outset of AEW's creation? Chris well, Jericho? And Cody. We, well, we had and Cody Rhodes. Cody. We had both of them, yeah, yeah. but didn't we, didn't we have, we had, uh, I'm forgetting, we had um, somebody else who, uh, when when he appeared on AEW, like w, WWE said, yeah, you can't you can't come here now. Was it Kevin Smith? Wasn't it? Wasn't oh, it? Oh, that's yeah, great. he was on the initial episode. It was yeah. Kevin Smith. Wasn't that Kevin yeah, it was Smith? Kevin we, Smith. He was with Jericho. They came in and did it. Yeah, they did it together. Did. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so I mean, you you have definitely Tony overcome quite a bit to grow this thing. There's no question about it. Where. Where does it go from here? Where, well, what's the future of it? it do you think, it's here? funny. I think we can go uh, to where, first of all, we've got something special. You know, doing a show every week, you know firsthand, like, what it is to do daily, weekly shows. And that we built something special. Now we have this audience where it's appointment viewing for so many people around the world. Wednesday nights for Dynamite, now on TBS here in America, but it's also on 
all over the world. Uh, you know, we're the worldwide leader in a number of markets. Like, for example, in England, we have the biggest TV audience by far because uh, AEW on ITV. We have this great audience and yeah. a great partnership. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have great audience in Canada on TSN and different places all over. But certainly here in America, you know, it's it, the way the opportunity, I think you'd appreciate this because I've known socially i ran into you uh first i told you i was a big fan when my dad bought the jaguars yeah. probably almost 12 years ago and you know it's funny i was at a party and at the time uh my friend Ke kevin riley was yes. the president of tbs and tnt right and basically in 2018 i went up to him and said hey kev i have this idea uh i was gonna ask are you looking at tv rights right now and he was and he thought wrestling TV rights was really interesting. And the idea of starting a wrestling company, I pitched to him at a cocktail party in April 2018. And that's kind of how this all got started. Very close out here in L.A. I love it. So, uh, so I, and again, I don't want uh, to uh, create anything, uh, but just to get an idea of the father-son relationship. Uh, have you said the four words uh, or are you comfortable feeling saying the four words to your dad? I told you so. Have you have you said those four words? Not a, I mean, not in so many words. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say it for you? I mean, no, I, I think he trouble? said it for himself. What's amazing is I don't, right. there'd be no need to do that because my dad actually in Forbes, no less, ah. and in other places, multiple major media outlets has gone out and said he sees now it was a great idea and he was wrong and, and one of the outlets he actually said this is a great lesson in parenting this is why sometimes <laughs> you should trust your kids <laughs> and so that's great i thought i love that my my kids are still not getting their ipad tonight if they don't do their homework i'll tell them right now if they're out there watching but i i, I do i do love this story it's amazing and again aew dynamite live tonight from the kia forum in los angeles 8 Eastern on TBS. Tony Khan, the CEO, GM, and head of creative of AEW here on The Rich Eisen Show. Let's now put on the hat of the chief football strategy officer of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tony, what was that Saturday night game like? What an Duval? amazing night. It was one of the greatest nights of my life. And it was what a special day it was. It was like the perfect day. Yes. And, and uh, I was so happy for everybody uh, associated with the Jags, the fans who waited so long to have a game like that. And to have that kind of big primetime winner-take-all game, I think, you know, we've been waiting for that in Jacksonville. And so the support of the fans was unprecedented. But also everybody uh, in the community rallied around the players who, who deserved it. I mean, there's people that have been with the team for a long time mm -hmm. that have seen a lot, that have, you know, been through a lot. And I was so happy for all of them, but also really happy uh, for the coaching staff that have come in. Some people that have been here through and, and been here through a lot, but also D Doug Peterson and what he's done. I just think Doug Peterson has performed uh, a miracle. He's come in and done an amazing job and rallied the locker room. And from where we were at two and six, three and seven, his confidence never wavered. I was there every step of the way, every uh, game, at, every, you know, with him before he addressed the team. And yes. he... I never stopped believing. He said when we were two and six, three and seven, and I never stopped believing. And in part because Doug never stopped believing. We were two and six, three and seven. Doug always said this is going to come down to the week last 18, week. Week eighteen, he said he it's going to come down to week eighteen. He always said it's going to come down to week eighteen. He we never wavered, and and, and then that's it happened. Amazing. It's what it did, and it came down that way. And 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 again, I know it's 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 definitely the, a turning point. Everybody keeps pointing to was the London game. The game in London, uh, and I know that's also significant for for you know your family as well in London in Wembley, and that he threw those interceptions and took it upon himself to say I don't want to feel that way again. And damn, was he really putting his his money where his mouth is right there? What what is what is what's your uh, you got a good Trevor Lawrence story where you realize you got this whole thing right? I mean, you probably knew it from Jump Street, but you got a good Trevor Lawrence story. Oh, Tony Trevor Clark? Lawrence is amazing. Uh, I mean, I think Trevor Lawrence, a great story about Trevor Lawrence. I mean, first of all, uh, there were games this season earlier when we were two and six, three and seven along the way where Trevor Lawrence really, for the first time, I saw like coming up in the locker room and telling people that wasn't acceptable. And he I would say those words. There was one time he did. And he and and I think that helped. And I think it was a very positive thing. Because yeah. it, it like you've seen the way the team's gone, and he's taken it upon himself, and he's performed 
he, he's led, but also everybody stepped up. It's been a team effort, and these have been team wins. And from Doug, the whole coaching staff, everybody stepped up. And at some point, everybody's been accountable and really worked really hard. And I and you know, this is my 11th season working at the Jaguars, and I've never seen a leader like Doug. And we have great things. Like we, you know, it's so great to have mm -hmm. a quarterback. People can believe in somebody reliable like Trevor, who's been so great. And, you know, I, I'm a statistician. And when you look at mm. the level of statistical improvement that Trevor's had, it's unprecedented. It really is. Are it's you a walking next gen stat? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, Tom? So I, I mean, well, you know, I am mean, on uh, uh, some of the NFL committees where we do, uh, you know, analyze the next gen stats. I also own True Media Networks. I'm so, sorry if I didn't if I if I mentioned a competitor. No, I'm not part of uh, okay. you know this is we actually right. work together. So True Media Networks actually we uh, work with the NFL. We work with uh, a number of the major media outlets, and right. also 25 out of the 30 Major League Baseball clubs get their analytics engineering support from True Media Networks. Um, so okay, so get let's let, let's let's get into this then. Uh, so many people think it, it, analytics is is taking over sports too much. Too much. I mean, baseball is the one that it's it's always a third rail subject when it comes to baseball. Certainly, when I see pitchers taken out because it's the third time through the order, and 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 gut and feel um, no longer are as important commodities as the numbers. What do you say to something like that? Well, it's uh, again like as a engineering and service provider, I can't speak to that because I think that's like for the you know that's same thing we fight in the NFL or in football in England, in the Premier League, mm -hmm. there's a balance between analytics and decision-making from the heart, and I think it's great. And that's the balance you have to find. And honestly, uh, I love the coaches of the Jaguars in Fulham, and I love mm -hmm. working in the front office. I love, you know, Trent Baalke is the general manager, and myself working in that sporting mm -hmm. director, general manager capacity at Fulham. I think it's great to have that in the front office when you're looking at signing players and also then the most important thing players going out on the field in the nfl or going out in the pitch in the premier league yes. and performing at that level that's human beings and statistical analysis is only a part of it but it's an important part of it that's why i use it for both sports and then to have coaches like Doug Peterson at the Jaguars and Marco Silva at Fulham yes. who want to work with this and, uh, and understand it, and then they, they go out and do the human side. Are That's, they just telling you that, though, Tony? It's the best balance. Doug is known for being, like, for just for an example, because yeah. I know you probably, I, I think you and the listeners probably follow the NFL a little more than the Premier <laughs> League, but, the, yes. but, but with the NFL, Doug is known for being a really aggressive fourth down, two-point conversion guy. Every he, fan knows that. So, so do you, do you, like, give me a for instance uh, of what you might do before this game against the Chargers. I, I mean, not, not to have you sure. uh, tell anything that you, what are you willing to share, I guess, then that, that, that before the, this huge game in Duval County, that you as the Jaguars financial strategy, chief financial strategy officer will tell him. Well, I mean, I do, I do the do football do? strategy, actually. Okay. So, the the, football so, strategy. so it's like, but the, the financial side would be I'm like. I'm sorry, I said financial. I mean, chief football strategy officer. Yeah, right yeah. Um, so uh, now it would be, um, you know, to be fair, like what I've done over the years. Yes. I started out and I would be in the football office like 80 plus hours a week. And now, because originally when I started working at Fulham, started outsourcing some of my work that I would yes. do as far as the analytics on the weekly opponent or yeah. the the team, the self scout or free agency, some of that stuff. I'm still doing a good amount of the work in the office. And also I have a laptop I bring on the road, like it's out in the car, out in the parking lot here. And I take it everywhere I go. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm at the wrestling show and I have my NFL laptop ready to go while yeah. I'm writing uh, the match card, laying out who's going to wrestle who on the big <laughs> match. And I also have my NFL laptop. I might have the coach of Fulham calling to talk about players. So you have to be ready to multitask just like sure. as a parent. You have multiple kids. You got yeah, sure. multiple responsibilities and you love everything you're doing. So for me, um, I really do think uh, – you know, stats are a part of the decision making process, right. but you want to have a balance, but it's great to have a coach that gets that. So like Doug right. 
is known for reading these reports. So it's like, you know, you, you'd want, you don't want to spend all those hours, whether it's me doing the 80 hours or now we divvy it up. Yes. And Doug brought a great staff with him. That's part of it. Doug brought people that really have done a lot of analytics work. And in Philadelphia, we're doing a lot of this. Right. And great people now that are part of the Jaguars organization that I work with. Um, that I really like. Ryan Pagnetti is somebody that I work with. And we have Zach Beisline, who's been at the Jaguars, who does a great job and a great department there and, and, and a great analytics department on the business side that chips in and helps uh, under Ari Landsman Ruse and great people. And we all work together and uh, put together information for the coaches that they can use on the opponents, on ourselves. Right. And then free agency, the draft. My big thing um, on a week like this would be putting together reports, again, on, on some – tendencies of an opponent or on ourselves on the chargers tendencies you know i can help you with that they're going to go for it on fourth down the chargers well that's good i, I mean, mean that's right? a smart the, thing to do sometimes i mean brandon staley is the king of that doug also has pretty some famous fourth down sir okay. and uh okay. so All right. uh also and i do think uh you know it's going to come down to uh at the end of the day it's going to be a great game yes. and uh it's going to be lit there man and really you're, excited you're, and, you're, you should be. And and the other thing that, that's amazing is, like, for the fans to have a home playoff game. Cause How amazing. I mean, truly amazing. Because, I mean, the fans, we were talking about it the other day. I mean, the fans, when you uh, might criticize the Jacksonville Jaguars or, or, hold on a minute, the worst thing is to go to commercial break in the draft when the Jaguars are on the clock. The disrespect that Jaguars fans, they feel they get – and it's just like, hey, we're definitely not going to do that to you the last two years when it was first on the clock. But wherever you land, I, I tell it, – it's not my fault. I see it on Twitter, you know, later on that night. Lit up. They And and whenever we talk about them, though, the engagement that we get, through the roof. Well, I appreciate through that. the roof. They're the best. And now with the teams performing well, you see the Jaguars fans, when we haven't won games, when we've had the number one pick – and the seasons have been hard. They've always been there, and, and they've always rallied, and they always yes. believe in the draft. I'm a big believer in the draft process. I, it's some of my first time seeing you run at the Combine because I'm a regular right. at the Combine, and yes. a lot of my work people ask me a lot of my opinions about players, and mm -hmm. I actually use a lot of the information from the Combine because there's a lot of valuable information that can be gathered there. It's, it's only one part of the process because the games are the most important thing by far, right. the games that the college football players play. But the combine's a big part of it. Um, something I'm a like big believer in, and actually probably the most useful thing I think I do in the off season is um, I work a lot on the undrafted free agents. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of good players through the years that I've been able to dig up that didn't get drafted that I called up and signed. Uh, like Mike Hilton is a good one. Uh, Mike Hilton doesn't play for us anymore, but Mike right. Hilton's a good player in the NFL. Yes. Right now, Trey Herndon is a really uh, doing a nice job for us. That's a player that I, I called up and signed at the end of the draft. Um, uh, Corey Grant did a great job for us, and we went to the AFC Championship game. Sure. And, uh, he was a big contributor on the team. Uh, Jared Wilson uh, is a safety who played for us for a while and had a, a very nice career for us, including making plays sure. in the playoffs in 2017 and a number of players like that. So I really do enjoy that, that part of it too, trying to use stats to help and then also put stuff together because having a GM like Trent Baalke who has experience with analytics, like just like Doug in Philadelphia worked with analytics a yeah. lot. Trent's done a lot of that also in uh, San Francisco. So it's great having people that believe in it and want to use it. I got a couple more questions for you, Tony Khan, on, on the, the uh, Jaguars, and it may be uh, out of, you know, um, your, if you will, title. Um, but uh, so much conversation, certainly with the success of the international series. And I've, I've called games, I've called games in Wembley. I've called games at Tottenham. I called a game in Munich. Fans go crazy, absolutely nuts. You know it. You're also, as, as we mentioned, the general manager of Fulham. You know the sports world over there. Um, and the idea that the league might have teams there, just stationed there, or a division there. Do you think that that is feasible? I, I don't know. It's uh, not something I have studied as much. I mean, I study what we do when the Jaguars mm -hmm. go play, but for us, we're still based in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know been a part of the season for us and it's become a big part of the Jaguars sure season and it's become yeah. a really great thing for the Jags I think um so you know as far as a permanent thing I don't know mm -hmm. I can only speak to the traveling I do you know going sure. back to Fulham but 
it, you know, it's certainly an interesting thought. Okay. And then, um, again, I'm, I, I'm sure this is out of your title, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Who is the individual in the Jaguars organization who decided to take the pants <laughs> off of Jackson DeVille and put a thong on him. Do we, do we, what happened there? Tony? I don't know. I don't know whose uh, remit that is. I don't know how that happened, but it's a good question. Uh, I Could think do some it, analytics on that. One. Well, it's like, I think at some point, like it's like Daffy Duck, you know, didn't wear pants, but now today would Daffy Duck be wearing pants? I don't know. Maybe he'd be wearing that, that Jackson DeVille thong thing. Well, I saw again on Saturday night, Jackson DeVille was in full uniform uh but one day it just I, I it caught a lot of people by surprise the tights the whole situation right there tony um jackson deville is a team player you know at one point <laughs> in the pandemic uh we had jackson deville in the stadium stampede yes and i did a wrestling match uh and put together this amazing match that took place in the jaguars stadium uh in the peak of the pandemic we did an empty stadium and they fought all I over saw, through the offices that. And it was actually pretty amazing, but Jackson DeVille uh, took a Judas uh, fact from Chris Jericho, and Chris <laughs> Jericho just laid that mascot out, and it's an amazing gif uh, that gets used to this day, uh, and that was a great moment. Okay, very good. Appreciate it. Well, just whoever is in the organization who did that, just tell him I said hello in the same way that the thong did to the rest of the America <laughs> and the world. Uh, AEW tonight is live from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, 8 Eastern on TBS. Uh, AEW Revolution is going to be in the home of the Warriors Chase Center on March the 5th in San Francisco. That's the fourth iteration of that. Um, TJ, you, are, you 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 want in tonight, right? That's the most. That's the last order of business. Is TJ would, wants to be there tonight? I would love to be there. Uh, yes. Mike Mike Del Tufo, are you in? Are you can't go tonight? I thought it was tomorrow, so I was ready for. Oh, tomorrow. I yeah. see what you're saying. Okay, he can't. Can can, can you give TJ Ray the TJ, driver? Oh yeah, let's get Ray the <laughs> He's got his own driver in Los Angeles. His name is Ray. If you ever need one, great. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's good to know. And, so, and, and not me and Mike. Ray are welcome. So, I'll, if, and if Ray wants to come into the show, you can come in. That's great. But TJ, you can come, and we'll get Ray a ticket too. Appreciate you, Tony. All right. So it's like a, like the Kirby enthusiasm. I don't want him to have to wait in the car. We should get him a ticket too. Right. Is he gonna sit out there and read the freak what book? What are you gonna do? Can't sit out there. Read a freak book. Right. <laughs> I'd only take them to get into the pat, you know. No, the at AEW, we lane. want people to come inside. We don't want the driver to sit out at the, the forum and read <laughs> the like free it. Book. Be... <laughs> Great reference, Tony. Thank you, Rich. Great oh. reference. At Tony Khan on Twitter, at Tony R. Khan on Instagram. Everybody check out AEW Dynamite live tonight. Congratulations on the raging success of Fulham FC. Congratulations on the Jaguars winning the AFC South <laughs> and hosting a playoff game. May, may they go on the, the, the run that you, you hope for. Um, and congrats on the raging success that is AEW uh, as well, all elite wrestling. Thanks Thank you, Rich. I'm excited. And everybody, please check out the show tonight on TBS. Uh, we're on at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central out here in L.A. Uh, you could watch it on TBS East at 5 p.m. or you could watch the West Coast feed at 8 p.m. And uh, we're going to have a great show tonight. Rich, I'm going to get you in the ring one of these days. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sure. What do you want me to? What would you want me to do? Well, I mean, you're, you're running the combine, so I've seen the kind of athlete you are. So yes. I think you could easily run the ropes. Okay. And I think we could t teach you. And it's a very difficult thing, but uh, I, I think it would make great content. And wrestling has great engagement. In AEW is oh, millions of fans. You don't need to sell me on that. I, I would be <laughs> all in on it. We'll get you. Um, you know, and maybe we could we could maybe we could fold the 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 charity into it or something like that. That would be great. I would love that. And uh, we could and tie it in. I mean, and run, Rich, run. You know, yes. that's once a year, so we could, like, space it out. That way you only have to work out twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, you know, it's not curb, but it's a Costanza line. That's a mic drop. <laughs> You're out. Thank you. That's a good way to end it. Tony Khan right here on The Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.